So I'm gonna share with you some tricks that you can use to find the length of arc for this curve between two points. And two of them are gonna be on the graphing calculator, one's gonna be on Desmos. Obviously, if you're in a face-to-face -face class, you're probably not gonna be using Desmos. So you might wanna get better with the graphing calculator. But one thing we'll notice that we need first is the derivative of our function. So I'll call this f of x, which is y, which is ln of secant of x. So let's start by finding the derivative, f prime of x. Now, when you differentiate a log term, it's one over the function, secant of x, times the derivative of that function. Does anyone remember what the derivative of the secant is? Secant tangent. Secant tangent, cool. And the nice thing is that that disappears. So I'm just left with tangent of x. So it's not a bad expression. Um, if you wanted to just type it in, you know, like that, we can do it with numerical integration. Integral between zero and pi over six, square root of one plus tangent of x squared dx. Nothing wrong with typing in like that, but sometimes our derivative function is a little nastier than just entering in a tangent of x. So let me show you a couple different tricks to, to work around this. So the first one, of course, we're gonna do numerical integration regardless, but let's take a look at the two functions that I put into my calculator. I've got the function itself and I got its derivative. So we'll call this maybe method one, is just to program in the derivative and then uh, integrate this way. So I'm gonna exit this and go to the math menu, math nine. I wanna integrate between zero and pi over six. So pi is up here above the little up arrow, divided by six. Your calculator has to be in radian mode when you do this calculation. And then I want the square root of the whole thing, one plus. Now here's where I'm gonna show you the first of two tricks. Um, the first trick is I don't wanna to have to type in the derivative. And this is gonna be particularly handy if your derivative function is more cumbersome. And then you won't have to deal with as many parentheses. So we're gonna to go to the VARS key. So the VARS key is right next to the clear key. And then cursor over one. So that we, we're looking at the functions. And you can press enter or type the number one here, either way. So I'll just type the number one. And I'll take the number one again. And so I got y1. But what does y1 have in it? y1 has my derivative. Great. Before I'm done, I'm going to hit the square key because I want to square that derivative. And then I got to tell my calculator that I'm really integrating with respect to x. So like that. Bam. OK. And let's compare that to the actual answer, which is the natural log of the square root of three. Now with your calculator doing things numerically, you might not always get the exact same answer, but you should get pretty close, certainly enough digits for my curiosity. So, okay, not too bad, you know, it matches. And actually not so good either. <laughs> How was I'm sure why one wasn't, I thought why two was the tangent. Oh, oh, that's right. There we go. Yeah, I was curious for a second what you'd get. Thank you. Um, well, yeah, I'm glad we did the that part of it. Yeah, I, sh I should have put in Y2 for the tangent. So let me go back here. This is good practice. Uh, I'm going to replace this with Y2. So to do Y2, I hit VARS, Y VARS, and then function 2. So that should be a little bit closer. Whew, it is closer, a lot closer. And a whole lot closer. Yep, so thanks Spencer. Mm -hmm. 
So that's one way to do it, is to integrate between zero and pi over six, square root of one plus y, uh, y1 or y2 squared dx. But what if you get a really ugly function? You're like, oh, there's just no way I wanna differentiate that one. You can do that. You can, you can work around that as well. So, um, you know, again, we've got the function in here, and presumably this is gonna be something which is harder to differentiate. Um, but let me clear out the key, the key history here and start this process all over again. So it's gonna be math nine, like it was just a minute ago, zero to pi over six, pi divided by six, and then the square root of one plus, and here's where we gotta get pretty creative. Um, so this time we're gonna hit math eight. Math nine gave us a numerical integral. Math eight's gonna give you a numerical, numerical derivative. So math eight, we're differentiating with respect to x. Well, what do we wanna differentiate? Oh, well, we gotta differentiate y1. So let me put it on y1 here. <clears throat> and somebody remind me when I'm all done, I gotta go back and put in that I gotta square this. So y1 is here, and then over here, I'll press enter twice. I've got y1, and now I'm gonna differentiate that with respect to x. But you know what, I need to square this whole thing. So let me put a right parenthesis and then a square, but every right parenthesis has to have a left parenthesis. So I gotta go back, in front of my derivative and put in that left parenthesis. So second, insert left parenthesis. And I'm sorry I didn't do that in a more efficient way. If you wanna fast forward to the very end of the line, if you hit the second key and then the right arrow, that'll fast forward you to the end of the line. I'll just back up there and put in a DX for myself. So wow, kind of an early expression, but you know, if you're looking at this and saying, I have no idea what the derivative is, this is a way you can get around that. Would this be allowed on a test or something if you said we can use FNA? No, on, on, a, on a test, if I asked you to just give me a numerical answer, then yes. Um, and I, I would think that for these problems, I, I can envision that, you know, just because some of the problems that I demonstrated for you today just really require too many little niche tricks that, okay, that works here. But I mean, it feels so contrived that I want you to be able to do something more general. And that more general thing is this. So yeah, I would expect to have to do something numerically on uh, the graphic calculator. And the, the first way to do it is, is fine. So really you've had three ways. If you can calculate the derivative like we did, which is the tangent, Great, just put in the tangent. Um, if you want, if your derivative is a little bit more involved and you wanna just type in the derivative into say y2 or y1 and then do that, that thing squared, that's fine. Or you can do what we did here, which was you know, do it numerically. If you can't calculate the derivative or calculating is a real bear. Now all of that's great. Um, and I hope that one of those works for you. Let me give you one last alternative, and that is decimals. I think this one's gonna be perhaps the easiest one. So the nice thing about decimals, for instance, is that it, um, uh, it understands things like secant. So let's start by typing in a function, f of x equals ln of secant of x. So there you go, there's your log function of the secant. And now to find the integral, well, where's the integral symbol? I don't know. I'm sure I could find it, but 
let me help you out. Type in INT. And this is so beautiful. It just pops up with the integral right there. We want to go from zero up here to pi. What do you think I got to do to type in pi? Well, there's a pi down there, but I always just like typing in pi. And then hit divide by, divide by six. And let's go down into the integrand. Square root of one plus, and I'm not gonna forget my parentheses again. I want a left parenthesis, and then I want the derivative of that squared. So here's what's really cool about decimals. Let's just type in f prime of x like that, and then another right parenthesis, because you have to have right and left parentheses balance, squared, and wow, dx. Bam. Done. Ooh, ah. Uh, Ooh, ah. Uh, yeah, well done. Thank you, dude. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, wow. I mean, now I doubt you're going to be able to use this in a face to face class. But for us in our situation being online, hey, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. What happens if you have multiple functions plugged in? Will it recognize which one or do they all start with f of x? Uh, just give your functions different names. So you can do like g of x. g of x equals. Um, okay, cool e to the x, okay? And then, then I could just rewrite this. Let's just copy that and change the g of x, or the f of x to g of x. There you go. And you know, the nice thing is that Ooh. Um, if, if you wanted to, you could just change this, change the function here. So you go, okay, well, I got a new function. Oh, let's put in tangent. Oh, doesn't like tangent, okay. Uh, let's type in, um, um, try to think, try to think, uh, just how about the, yeah, E raised to the three X, something, whatever I want there. And actually that would show, would show pretty good. So, all right, well, Take your pick. You should probably know the, the two that I did on the graphing calculator, at least one of them that I did on the graphing calculator. Um, this one, I don't know. I've never shown a, a class that before. Any feedback on that? Is that, is that too much? Or is it like, yeah, okay, I could see doing that if I had to. It's actually pretty have, handy. I don't have an 83 or 84, so go figure. Oh, that, right. that actually helped understand like the entire process because I was a little bit confused to begin with, but like to realize that you're just getting F taking the prime and then plugging it into the integral makes it a lot like it makes more sense that way. If cool. you have us do F and int, would you have us like get it all the way there and then just F and int it? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd ask okay. you to write down the expression that you're integrating and then finish it with F and int. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Well, hey, thanks so much for the feedback. I will post this and you can feel free to refer to it. So thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.